Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose and PlayStation decided to unload today. We got a lot of new PlayStation information, including PlayStation VR 2.0, a big game delay, more PlayStation PC games, a PlayStation Plus update, and at least one major PlayStation exclusive is expected to release in 2021. So there is a lot of PlayStation news to go over today and we will talk about all of those topics today. There's also an Xbox rumor going around that the internet is heavily speculating on. This one is a little strange, but we'll talk about that later as well. Yeah, we got a lot to go over today though, so without a further ado, let's first talk about a new Switch game that I think most people were expecting by this point. Last year, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 released for the Xbox One, PC, and PlayStation 4, but pretty much immediately there was a strong belief that it would eventually make its way over to the Switch thanks to some data miners discovering Switch controllers after digging around. This is something that Activision seems to do with the Switch, where they do a staggered release and kind of hide the fact that they will eventually come over to the Switch. They did this with Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, so it should come as no big surprise that Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 has officially been announced for the Switch. It will make its debut sometime in 2021, and it will also be heading to the Xbox Series and PlayStation 5 on March 26. And that sounds like great news and all, but unfortunately you will have to pay a $10 upgrade if you already own the standard digital edition on last generation platforms, which is probably the version most people opted out for. That's not really ideal considering how many games have put out free upgrades to this point, but they are trying to sweeten the pot by giving you some new bonus items, including a new skater and gear. However, if you bought the Digital Deluxe Edition, then you will get this upgrade at no extra cost. I don't expect this decision to go over well with everybody, but if you do an upgrade for the Xbox Series X or PS5, then you will be able to play at 120 frames per second at 1080p resolution or 4K at 60 frames per second. Next up, we have a new teaser that I think some of you will be excited about. THQ Nordic dropped a new promo trailer for Destroy All Humans where they announced they're slashing the price of Destroy All Humans for Midweek Madness. You will be able to pick up Destroy All Humans for 50% off, which if you haven't played this game already, definitely go check it out. This will take place from February 23rd to the 26th, but what's so exciting about this trailer is right at the end when Crypto comes out and teases, he's not finished yet. Yeah, they're prepping for some kind of an announcement here. The question is, what will this announcement be? Is this going to be a sequel? Is it going to be DLC? Or is it something entirely different? It's hard to say exactly what they're teasing here as of this moment, but it looks like Destroy All Humans is definitely coming back in some shape or form based off this tease. I certainly hope so. I was pleasantly surprised when they announced that Destroy All Humans was coming back. It was interesting seeing them bring a game like this back all these years later, and they actually put a lot of effort into the remake. I do like THQ Nordic as a publisher. They really have a lot of double-A sized games, and I think the industry needs more games like that. So here's to hoping we get another Destroy All Humans experience rather soon. Let's talk about Xbox though, and I found this one to be rather amusing. One thing that Xbox does on almost a regular basis is that they have Easter eggs in their interviews and videos in general, especially Phil Spencer. Last year, Phil Spencer had the Xbox Series S on his shelf in an interview before it was even announced. He also teases things by wearing game-related t-shirts such as Battletoads. Even last week when Xbox officially revealed their new headset, it was quickly pointed out that their new headset was previously shown in the Xbox Series launch trailer. Again before it was announced. So yeah, fans are now taking a closer look at new Xbox related videos and interviews. And what do you know? In a new Phil Spencer interview, he's sitting in front of a lot of different items. And the one that most people seem to be zeroing in on is the Luden figure, which is the logo of Kojima Studios. It's sitting right next to the Xbox logo, causing a lot of speculation that Hideo Kojima is working on an Xbox game. Some also suggest that it's an Xbox Game Pass game because Phil Spencer is wearing an Xbox Game Pass shirt. And okay, that is intriguing. I am a big fan of Hideo Kojima and it would be interesting to see him partner up with Xbox, but at the same time, this almost seems too obvious of an Easter egg to be true. There's also a Nintendo Switch in the background, so I mean, this could be nothing. I mean, you can't rule it out because they have teased things in the past this way, but at the same time, don't look at this as any kind of confirmation or proof of some kind of existing partnership. 
It's fun to speculate on, but this really could be absolutely nothing. Only time will tell when Kojima eventually announces his next game. There are rumors that he is working on a new horror game and is also planning some kind of PS5 Death Stranding Extended Edition. I'd imagine that will be his next announcement, but let me know what you think about this rumor. Do you think it means anything or is it nothing at all? Now speaking of Xbox, they also revealed Xbox games with gold for the month of March, so let's check out what they have to offer. You have Warface Breakout, Vicious Attack Llama Apocalypse, Metal Slug 3, and Port Royal 3. Now I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is not a great month for Xbox games with gold. Metal Slug 3 is a decent game, but still this is far from a stellar month. Really this service has not been great for a long time. They did have a decent month last month with Gears 5, but it seems like Games with Gold is just not working. It really just takes me back to last month though. Thankfully, Xbox backtracked their decision to double the price of Xbox Live Gold because it just wasn't worth it. There's a debate that $60 a year isn't worth it, let alone $120. I guess it is what it is though. Hopefully there are some games here that you'll enjoy, but in my opinion, they do need to make some improvements with Xbox Live Gold and its service. I will say that Xbox Live Gold as a multiplayer service works well, and there is that. Moving on though, let's talk about PlayStation because there is a lot to go over here. I'll try to go over some of this as quick as possible, but let's just dive right into it. PlayStation boss Jim Ryan confirmed that they will continue releasing day one games into PlayStation Plus. I've been praising them a lot for this since the release of the PS5. Bug Snacks came to PlayStation Plus day one, and then you had Worms Rumble in December, and then this month you had Destruction All-Stars. Yeah, they've been knocking it out of the park with these day one releases, and Jim Ryan has confirmed that they will continue to do this. He explains it as an interesting and innovative way of publishing games that works for their publishers and their fans love it. And yeah, I do love that you're doing this. This is one of my favorite things about Xbox Game Pass, and it's awesome that PlayStation is doing something similar with PlayStation Plus, a very successful subscription. It was confirmed earlier that 87% of all PS5 owners have PlayStation Plus, and they certainly made it worthwhile for the beginning of this generation. Even if a game doesn't turn out to be great, you still get to play it day one and see for yourself if you like it or not. It's interesting that PlayStation took this direction with day one releases though, instead of doing it with PlayStation Now, but I'm glad to see they're going to continue doing this. Now, unfortunately, there was a big game delay for an upcoming PS5 exclusive, and that is Gran Turismo 7. Sony seemed to have plans to release Gran Turismo 7 sometime in 2021, and I even speculated that it would be the first half of this year, but that will not be the case after all. It has officially been delayed to 2022 due to COVID-related issues. This is an ongoing problem that much of the game industry has dealt with, and it's understandable. I know it's disappointing, but you need to keep in mind that delays when made are important decisions to ensure the highest quality game upon release. I know there's always a few fans who kind of throw temper tantrums over these type of delays, but ironically enough, I think Cyberpunk 2077 kind of shows you why games are delayed. That game has taken a ton of heat, so to all these game developers out there, take your time. There's plenty of gamers on your side and will remain patient, and as for GT7, I will wait patiently. This is a huge game as we've talked about on this channel numerous times. In fact, this was the biggest franchise for PlayStation back during the PlayStation 2 era where it sold more than 25 million units. That's pretty insane, but I'll look forward to playing sometime in 2022. I'm sure this will be a high quality racing sim when it eventually does release. The good news though is that Jim Ryan in this interview with GQ did note that Horizon Forbidden West is still slated to release in 2021. He says he's feeling pretty good about Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Returnal, and Horizon Forbidden West in 2021, and that is a pretty solid lineup of games. Forbidden West on the PlayStation 5 is intriguing. This game will be heading to the PlayStation 4 as well, but the thing that really excites me about this game is that it's coming from the technical geniuses of Guerrilla Games. They have always been known to push the bar in console games with high fidelity graphics. Killzone looked absolutely amazing on the PlayStation 3, and if you look at Shadowfall for the PlayStation 4, it still looks fantastic today, even though it was a launch title. Then you have Horizon Zero Dawn, which again looked amazing, and I think Forbidden West could end up being an early generation graphical showcase for the PS5 when it eventually releases later this year. I know a lot of fans will definitely be excited about this game. 
Horizon Zero Dawn was a massive success for the PS4, and I think Forbidden West could possibly push a lot of PS5 units, even though it is a cross-generation game. One big talking point for PlayStation, though, has been their shift in business over the last few years and how they have slowly released more and more PlayStation games on PC. And they did announce a new PC game today. Days Gone officially will be coming to PC sometime this spring, which adds to the ever-growing PlayStation PC lineup. You have Heavy Rain, Detroit Become Human, Death Stranding, and Horizon Zero Dawn, which has all made their way to the PC platform. And you know what? This has been more controversial than it needs to be. Some fans feel betrayed by moves like this, which they really shouldn't be. This helps Sony as a company, and in return, it also helps PlayStation fans. They make very high quality games and also very expensive AAA games. And by expanding to the PC, it helps PlayStation in several ways. One, it allows PlayStation to make more money in order to invest more money into PlayStation so you can get more great games that you love by them. It also expands their fan base. As an example, some PC gamers might decide to buy a PlayStation 5 for Horizon Forbidden West after enjoying Zero Dawn on PC. I mean, these games have been out for a few years now, and porting them over to PC should not be frowned upon. This is good for the game community and PlayStation alike, and Jim Ryan kind of alluded to that in this interview. It also sounds like they will continue to do this further. Now, I don't think they will approach this in how Xbox does. Xbox releases their games on PC and Xbox Day One, but so far PlayStation has done staggered releases. They don't seem to be inclined to do that just yet with Day One releases, but if they do continue to bring over PlayStation 4 games, please, let's make Bloodborne happen. Somehow, this game needs to get a 60 frames per second update. I would like to see it come over to the PS5, but somebody at Sony needs to update this game to PC or PlayStation 5. I don't really care where, just make it happen. Let me know how you feel about these PlayStation PC releases though, and will you pick up Days Gone when it releases this spring for PC? The last thing that PlayStation talked about was PlayStation VR 2.0. Well, technically we don't know the real name just yet, but they did give a small update on what to expect with their next virtual reality headset, and I think there's some things to definitely be excited about here. I do think PlayStation did a good job with their first headset, especially with their first party lineup. I don't think they get enough credit for this, but Astrobot was absolutely amazing, and they also had some other really good games like Blood and Truth. With this next headset though, it sounds like they're really going to try to push the technology forward. This headset will only have one cord that plugs into your PlayStation 5, which is a big improvement over the little box that you had to plug into your PlayStation 4. That thing was a mess. The other thing that they're trying to do with this, though, is bring new controllers that play similar to the DualSense controller, and this is a very welcome addition. I think adaptive triggers will add a lot of immersion that VR headsets can offer you, but equally as important, we won't have to deal with PlayStation Move controllers anymore. That was never an ideal controller to play VR games on. I mean, they worked and everything, but this will still be a major improvement. However, do not expect PlayStation VR 2.0 to release in 2021. It will not release this year. As a VR fan though, I'm definitely excited to see what they do with PSVR 2.0. On to the last topic, the poll of the day. There has been a lot of controversy since last week about Nintendo charging $60 for their HD remasters. What sparked this heated debate is Zelda Skyward Sword HD being $60, and a lot of fans are not too happy about this. So I asked you if you thought it was reasonable, and the overwhelming majority of you said that yes, $60 is too much. That's honestly about what I would have expected, but at the same time, I don't think this will change anything. Nintendo has been doing this for a while with their remasters, and they will continue to do this as long as people buy them. They've brought over several games from the Wii U, and every time, you've had to pay a premium price. I'm actually surprised that fans are just now talking about this when Nintendo has always done this. And even more, all of these games are selling better on the Switch than they did on past platforms. And even though Skyward Sword released on the Wii, which was a very successful console, I'd be willing to bet that Skyward Sword does better on the Switch. The Wii had a lot of casual gamers on it, whereas the Switch has more of a core audience, which will greatly benefit Skyward Sword. There was also an abundance of gamers who skipped out on Skyward Sword because of its motion controls, which this HD remaster solves with a more traditional control scheme. So I agree that $60 is a little expensive, but with that said, I think fans will still buy it and enjoy it. I mean, even if you look at a game like Pokemon Sword and Shield, 
Much of the online community were calling for a boycott of that game, and it ultimately became the best-selling Pokemon game since Silver and Gold. So I think it'll be interesting to see how Skyward Sword HD performs on the Switch. Again, I do agree that it might be too expensive, but will it affect its overall success? That's where I would probably say no. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.